I'm Monica from Hackster. In our last tutorial, we learned how to use JavaScript blocks with Microbit. Today we'll be covering the basics of coding with Python. We'll focus mainly on using the Microbit's LED display. I will start by walking through a simple code and how it works. I'll show you where to find common Python commands used in coding, and then we will walk step by step through writing the code to measure temperature with your Microbit. There is so much more that you can do with a Microbit than what we will cover in this video. At the end of this lesson, I will include a list of resources including the reference guide for Python, lesson plans, and written code for you to use in your classroom. First of all, why learn Python? As of 2018, Python is the fourth most popular coding language in the world. It's commonly used by scientists, data scientists, and web developers. The code we'll be using today is actually called MicroPython. It's a version of Python designed specifically to run on microcontrollers, like the Microbit. MicroPython is open source, which means anyone can see all of the code and anyone can edit it and submit their edit for review. Let's get started. Go to microbit.org and click Let's Code. Scroll down to Python. Let's open the code reference in another tab. This reference has everything you need for coding with MicroPython. It's a good idea to keep it open when you are coding or helping your students to code in MicroPython. Let's go back to the Let's Code page and click Let's Code under Python Editor to open the Python Editor. Unlike the JavaScript Editor, the Python Editor doesn't include blocks. The very first line of your Python code is from microbit import star. The star symbol indicates the word all. By writing this command first, you are telling the MicroPython editor that you want to use or import all of the code needed for the microbit to work. The code needed to make a microbit work is called a library. So what's a library? A library is a larger collection of code that can be referenced by using a short command in the editor. Take this command, display.scroll, as an example. The command display tells the microbit that the part of the microbit you want to control is the LED grid, and dot .scroll tells your microbit to scroll the letters within the parentheses and quotations across the microbit LED grid. Since MicroPython is open source, you can actually view all of MicroPython's libraries here at github.com. If we navigate to the library for display, you can see that there are 597 lines of code in this library. Thankfully, they've all been defined by a simple command, so you don't have to write all 597 lines in your code. All you have to do is write dot .scroll. There are many different types of libraries that you can use and import. The microbit library must be included in your code in order for to use a microbit with MicroPython. It includes code to let you control the temperature sensor, accelerometer, LED grid, pins, and everything else on your microbit's hardware. Some special code isn't included in the microbit library, so you'll have to import it separately. For instance, say you wanted to generate a random number when you shake the microbit. You would need to type import random to import the random module, since the code you needed to generate a random number is not included in the basic microbit library. If you want to use music, you have to type import music. If you're getting creative and you want to use some extra NeoPixels in your project, you have to type import NeoPixel. Unfortunately, the microbit currently doesn't support the onboard Bluetooth radio with Python. The Python code for BLE is a library as well, and it's simply too many lines of code to fit on the microbit. Don't forget to include the libraries in the first line of your code. You'll see while true a lot when you're coding in MicroPython. While true basically means that while some condition is true, keep looping over some code. It might be confusing at first. What exactly is true? Since while true doesn't define what condition needs to be met to be true for it to continue looping, it will keep looping forever unless you type break. Since it loops forever, it is used similarly to the forever event handler in the blocks. Let's walk through what the code within the while loop does. We already talked about the display dot scroll command. This command will scroll whatever is written in the parentheses across the LED display. Since the 70s, it's been tradition for your first program to say, hello world. 
Our second command, display.show, will show whatever is in the parentheses on the LED display. In this case, it will show an image of a heart. There are a lot of built-in images that you can use with the image command. The list of images can be found in the microbit reference under images. You can also create your own images, which we'll talk about a bit later. The last part of this code is sleep2000. Sleep is the command for pause or wait. This command tells the microbit to stop the display and wait the amount of time in the parentheses. When you are coding with your microbit, the default time length is in milliseconds. So in this case, the display will stop and wait 2000 milliseconds, which is the equivalent of two seconds before repeating the sequence. Now that you know what your code does, run it. Press download to download your code as a hex file. Make sure your microbit is plugged into your computer. Drag and drop it to upload it to your microbit and see what it does. The microbit says, hello world, then shows a heart. Then it waits two seconds, then it starts all over again. Go ahead and delete the code beneath microbit import star. Just like we did in the last lesson in JavaScript, we're going to build a temperature sensor that alerts you if the temperature gets too hot or too cold. Before we start writing our code, we need to think about how we want our thermometer to work. We want it to show us if the temperature is too hot or too cold. There are a few ways to do this, either by playing a noise, showing a display, or both. For this demonstration, we're going to have the thermometer scroll the temperature and then show a display to indicate if the temperature is within the desired range or not. Our desired temperature range is 28 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is greater or equal to 29 degrees Celsius, we will have the LED display show an angry face. Or else, if it is less than 28 degrees, we will have the LED display show something to indicate that it's cold. If the temperature is right at 28 degrees, then that means it is in the desired range and we will have the microbit display a happy face. We're going to make a forever loop using while true. Type wh and hit the tab key. Replace condition with true. Snippets are a cool way to avoid typing. You can access snippets from the snippets button, but it's a lot quicker and easier to learn the triggers for the different fragments of code. While our loop is running, let's get the temperature. I'll search the reference to see how to do that. In the reference, I find the method microbit.temperature. I can actually just type temperature parentheses since I've already imported the microbit library. I'll save the temperature to a variable called temp. A variable is used to label and store information in your program. By creating a variable called temp, we can store the temperature that is detected by the microbit. Then, whenever you want the microbit to use the stored value, in this case the temperature, all you have to do is write the word temp in your code. Now, let's draw the temperature. Display.scroll parentheses temp should work. At a brief sleep, 500 milliseconds, so that our microbit gets a break. Save your code. Unlike the JavaScript editor, pressing save won't save your code in the browser. Instead, it will download your code as a Python file. Download and run the code that you have. Uh-oh, looks like my microbit is telling me that I have an error. The error is a type error. Although this code should work, it doesn't for some reason. So what is a type error? Data types are a bit out of scope for this tutorial, but I recommend reading more about them by searching data types in the reference. Because we want our microbit to display a number rather than letters, we'll have to change our temperature value to be a string. To do that, we simply write str in front of temp like this. Now, when we upload our code, we can see that the code is working. It displays a temperature. If MicroPython complains about a name error, it's probably because you've typed something inaccurately. For Python to work, it has to be typed exactly right. 
if Python, if MicroPython complains about a syntax error, you've simply typed code in a way that MicroPython can't understand. Check that you're not missing any special characters like quotation marks or colons. Indentation is also extremely important in MicroBit. Indentation is how your program knows the order of operations. If you don't indent or indent too much, MicroBit will complain about an indent error. You can indent more by selecting the code you want to indent and pressing tab. Indent less by selecting it and pressing shift tab. Sometimes your microbit just stops responding. If this happens, try power cycling it. That is, unplug the USB cable and battery cable that's connected, and then plug the cable back in again. You may also need to quit and restart your code editor application. Now that we've written code to display the temperature, let's write an if statement that will alert us that the temperature is over 28 degrees. Start by using snippets to write the framework for your statement. If starts an if statement. EI starts an else if statement. EL starts an else statement. We'll add the temperature threshold that we want to trigger certain reactions. If temp is greater than or equal to 29, do something. Else if temp is less than 28, do something else. Else, in other words, if and only if the temperature is equal to 28, do a final thing. So what is the thing we want to do? We want to display an image. Go to the reference to figure out how to display images. Just like blocks, MicroPython comes with lots of built-in pictures to show on the display. For example, to make the device appear happy, you type display.show image happy. Here's a list of built-in images. We'll add a happy face to our else statement if the temperature is 28 degrees. Let's add an angry face for when the temperature is above 29. You can also create your own images. Here is an example of the code you would write for an image. This is the happy image that is already pre-coded in the microbit. You can replicate it by turning specific LEDs on and off using 0 for off and 9 for the highest brightness. You can see in the code on the right there is a 5x5 five five grid that matches the LED light display on the microbit. We created a variable called happy, and any time we write that variable name in our code, the LED lights up based on our image grid code. Let's create a snowflake image to represent the cold. Each LED pixel on the physical display can be set to one of 10 values. If a pixel is set to zero, then it's off. It literally has zero brightness. However, if it's set to nine, then it is at its brightest level. The values one to eight represent the brightness levels between off zero and fully on nine. I've tested it by copying it into the default sketch and uploading it to my microbit. Let's be honest, that doesn't look like a snowflake at all. Thankfully, microbit has an awesome feature that lets us animate images. First, make a bunch of images that show what the snow will look like as it is falling. Name the images, Snowflake 1, Snowflake 2, Snowflake 3, etc. Now we'll add them to an array named all underscore snowflakes. An array is a fancy way to say list. This is where we can list words, numbers, or images and have them appear on the LED display in order, one after the other. We put the list into a variable called all snowflakes. That way, on the next line, we can just ask the microbit to display dot show snowflakes without having to rewrite all of the image code again, and it will show each image in the order that we listed it in the array. To make the snowflake animation run, type display dot show all underscore snowflakes. I'll set loop to true and clear to false. So I want my snow to fall over and over again. Setting loop to true means it will continue to loop forever, and setting clear to false means that we will not clear the LED display before starting the loop over again. 
Open another browser window and paste just the Snowflake code. Download it and upload it to your microbit. You should see the snow falling. Perfect! Now go back to your temperature sensor code and upload it to your board to test your final product. Try testing the sensor by placing the microbit near a heater or above a cup of ice to see how the microbit detects the change in temperature. We've gone over the basics of the Python editor. To continue learning, I'd recommend going over this Getting Started Microbit tutorials found in the MicroPython reference. If you finish those, go up one level in the reference and you'll find BBC's UCL Microbit tutorials. These tutorials go over a number of different topics and they also include some cool challenges. For inspiration, you can always go to hackster.io slash microbit or search hackster for tutorials using Python on the microbit. Happy hacking!